All right, logarithm. So this might be a new topic for you, maybe, maybe not. So this fits right in with exponential and logarithmic functions because, you know, logarithmic functions. So exponent, excuse me, logarithms, logarithmics, logarithm, logarithms are the inverse of exponential functions. Okay, so remember that's going to, that's, they are, and you'll see this when we see, when we look at the graphs, they are exponential functions that have been reflected across the line y equals x. Now, if you've never seen logarithmic form before, this is how it works. So exponential form is over here on the left, logarithmic form is over here on the right. And it is a different way to focus what we're, fo what we're looking for. So <clears throat> in exponential form, our focus is on the result. The, oh, I, I did this wrong, something happened, I'm gonna pause it and fix it. What's funny about that is, is that when I was making this slide, um, I actually made the same mistake to begin with, and then I caught the mistake that I had made, and I guess I put it right back to the same mistaken form. Uh, so <coughs> in exponential form, we are focused on the result of finding the exponent of the thing, whereas in logarithmic form, we fo we're focused on the exponent, right? So well, there's a little bit of terminology here, right? The B is the base in both of them. So the base of B to the Y equals X logarithm, logarithm, uh, log base B of X equals Y. And if we're going back and forth between the forms, this is how it works. So let's practice that and let's put some numbers on it. Let it, let it make sense, right? So we've got a few different examples we're going to do here, all right? So, oops, it's happening, very strange. All right, so on this side, we're gonna write these things that are in logarithmic form in exponential form. And this will be something that, that makes sense. So the log base two of eight equals three. If we're gonna turn this into exponential form, it would be two to the three equals eight, which we know is true, right? Two cubed equals eight. All right, so that makes sense. So the same thing here, four to the negative four, four to the negative four equals one over 256, which this we also know because four to the fourth is 256 and that negative flips it down underneath. So that's easy peasy. So that's going from logarithmic to exponential form. Now what about exponential form to logarithmic form? So we do the same thing. We use the word log. We do the same thing, but backwards, right? Log. And then the base is the same. So base 15 in this case. Log base 15 of the argument over here, the equals 3,375 equals the exponent of 3, right? Easy peasy. Same deal right here. So the log base four, so the bases match, of two equals one half. That's easy peasy, right? Switching back and forth is no big deal. All right, let's do the next thing. So <clears throat> this time we're going to evaluate the log base 16 of four. Now with our current knowledge, what we know so far it, we, this won't always be true, but with what we know so far, in order to do that, we need to switch this from logarithmic form to exponential form, right? So we need to change this to 16 to the, we're going to put x as our unknown, equals 4, right? So that we're focused on the exponent. So now we can solve this like we've done exponential equations before, like last lesson, right? We can turn this 16 into four squared and then to the x, right? That's this x right there. Change the 16 to four squared because four squared is 16 equals four. So now see the bases match. So now we can set the exponents equal. Remember if there's nothing there, it's a one, right? So we end up with two x equals one. And then we can finish solving by dividing by one, no, lies, by two on both sides. That two cancels, leaving us with x equals one half. 
Uh, we wor we'll learn ways where we don't have to stick this <coughs> into exponential form to solve, but that's a tool that we have in our tool belt. Let's do the next thing. All right. <coughs> so graphing logarithmic functions. So logarithmic functions are, like I said, they are the exponential function, but reflected across that line y equals x. So let me kind of sketch out what I mean. So like if we were to graph dotted in here, the line y equals x, and we were to stick here, let's do kind of a pale pink, the exponential growth function, it would look something like this, right? That's the exponential growth function. And if we take and we flip this over that, then we end up with this, right? And so that's so that's what we have here. Logarithmic functions uh, are just exponential functions that have been reflected over. So there are two types of parent functions for logarithmic functions, just like there are in exponential functions. There's this one, whenever the B, that base, is greater than one, then it looks like this. It starts down low, comes up here. Now, you notice that it doesn't say y-intercept, it says intercept, right? And it's the important intercept and in this case it's the x intercept because of how it because of how it goes there actually is no y intercept because there is an asymptote right here at the y axis or the line x equals zero right there's an asymptote right there that this is going to get closer and closer to but never touch so there actually is no y intercept there is however an x intercept and on the parent function it goes through one zero if we shift up or down left or right that's going to change right we've seen that before we're going to see that again all right so next oh I should say this one. So this one would be like the exponential decay function reflected over, <coughs> right? Same idea. We start high and go low, right? Same sort of idea, right? Let's look at the next thing. All right. So we're going to do some, this, this should say graph. Graph this, right? Graph f of x equals the log base 5 of x. So this is one of the parent functions, right? And so if we were to graph this, oops, let's, let's, hit, let's see if we can figure out a few key features here, and then we'll get a quick sketch and make, ourself, make it easy. I'm going to move this to there. That's going to make my, make my life easier in a second. You'll see what I mean. So this is just like the parent function, so it's going to go through the point it's going to go through the point uh, 0, 1, right? And then if we want to figure out another point to graph and kind of how this is going to go, because on this side is, is where it's going to matter. We, we, we need kind of need a point that's out here somewhere so we can have a reference for does it go up this much or does it go up this much or this much or whatever else, right? So how much do it go? Well, remember, if we think about this in in exponential form, we can think five to the what equals one. So we can try to basically find out the one here. All right, I, I, I misspoke, right? So we're going to kind of treat and do the why part of this and make ourselves a little bit easier. So what I meant is five to the one, right? Okay, so let's let's get a where is it going? Where is this going to graph going to be at positive one and at negative one? That way we kind of get a bit of a reference. So if we have a one in here, the log base five of x, that would be five to the first equals what, right? If we're converting that to exponential forms, because that would be five to the one equals x. Five to the one is five, right? So if we're kind of building a little mini T chart of what's going on here, we're kind of building it backwards from what we usually do. And this is gonna be enough for us to get these graphed for what we need for this lesson. We're not gonna have a whole lot of specificity and a whole lot of points and whatever else, but it's gonna get us enough, right? So let's do a one and a negative one. So five to the first and five to the negative one. So it flipped over. So five to the first equals five, right? 
and 5 to the negative 1 equals 1 fifth, right? So at 5, 1, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, we've got a point up over here, right? And then negative 1 and 1 fifth, right? So that's right there getting close, and so it's going to look something like that, right? We said, and we were right, that this is a one uh, version of the parent function. Now, I have also taken the liberty of sticking a prettier graph on here instead of the, the mess that I've drawn. So you can see that on this one, it does exactly why exactly like what we we're talking about. It goes through the point five one, right? And then <coughs> negative one and one fifth. That one's harder to see, right? We can see kind of what's going on over here. Right, so that's what this graph looks like. Let's do another one that is a variation on the same thing. Now you can see what, what I've done here, right? You can probably guess. All right, so this one is the same. We're going to do kind of the same sort of idea. For this one, we're going to do one-third to the one. So we're going to kind of do enough to get going. This one is not shifted up, down, left, right. We're going to relearn about that here pretty soon. This one is this one doesn't isn't dilated or translated. We are going to talk about that here in a second, and it's going to be just as easy as it's always been. So at one and then at negative one, it would be at one, it would be one third, and at negative one, it would be at three. Now you're going to notice, as I put up the graph, that this is this variation because B is between zero and one, right? Let me drag that there. Good job. Okay, so... At positive one, <coughs> at positive one on the y, it is at one third, right? So positive one, which would be right here. So it's like almost crossing the the um, um, axis. Hold on, time out. So I don't know if I brought in the wrong picture or what happened, but that was not, in fact, uh, the right picture. You can you can see I I put in the correct graph. This is Desmos that I'm using to to uh, <coughs> excuse me to make these images. Uh, this is this is the graph here. It crosses once we get over to three. It's down to negative one. So I don't I must have dragged in the wrong picture or something. So. That is where that crosses there. It's easy peasy, lemon squeezing at, and at one third, so like about right here ish, right? It's at one, right? And so that's enough to be enough to be getting on with, right? So I don't I don't know what this picture is, but it's not what I was meant to be graphing. It looks more like just kind of looking at it. It looks like maybe it's one, maybe I typed in one fourth, maybe, because it still goes through there. So I think this might, th I think that this picture, for some reason, maybe is actually f of x equals the log base one fourth. Maybe I typed in the wrong thing of x. I think that's probably what this picture actually was. And so, anyway, continuing on with some more things. So, now, this I made much simpler because we've done these transformations and used this stuff over and over and over again already. And so, I, that's, why, that's the, why it's same, same, right? So, all the same stuff that we've seen before. The A is a dilation, right? So, if it's, if it's greater than 1, it stretches vertically. If it's... If it's if it's between 0 and 1, it compresses. If it's negative, it flips over, like flips over this way, right? If the K, so outside of the parentheses, is it goes up and down exactly like you'd expect. The H, because of that negative right there, is horizontal shift, and it moves opposite, right? Just like we've always done. We've done a bunch of this, and so, excuse me. We're going to do a couple of examples of translated graphs and remind us how to do that. So this time the base is the base here is uh, greater than one. So we're working with this parent function, right? That usually 
that goes starts down here and goes up there, right? That's the parent function that we are working with. Oops, what did I do? There it is, back again, right? And then what has changed? Well, it is dilated by three, right? And it is shifted up one unit, right? And so we're gonna kind of do something really similar, right? So the normal parent function, if we were to graph this, it would go through, <coughs> excuse me, it would go through one, uh, or it would go through not one, it would go through 10, one, right? So it's gonna go through, it would normally go through 10, one, and it would go through uh, one tenth negative one, right? So that's what it would normally do. And then it's, but it's gonna be shifted over to the right one. So this whole thing is gonna shift, not to the right, it's gonna be shifted up one, right? Which is not gonna change our asymptote because remember our asymptote is going up and down. I'm kind of kind of talking all through this before I show the graph. Our asymptote is going up and down. So if we're, if we're shifting our graph up, the asymptote is still the same, right? Excuse me. But it is also stretched by three. Let's take a look at the graph and kind of talk through what has happened. If we're lucky, we have the correct graph this time. So we don't see all the way over, right? But we notice a couple of things here. First thing we ought to notice is that it does not go through at zero one, right? Because we shifted up by one space, right? So it's moved up by one. So instead of going through one zero, it goes, it goes up here. So it would actually go through probably a half zero or something like that, right? So that's one of the things that we notice as we're getting points and we're graphing this thing. So where else could we get a point from? Well, we could get another point from figuring out when this part would equal one, just that by itself, right? 10 to the what equals one, right? Or no, 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 that's not really, that's not what I meant at all. All, uh, so how could we make this equal one? Well, if this was a 10, 10 to the first equals 10, right? So if X equaled 10, then it would, then this, this whole thing would be a one, right? And if that whole thing is a one, so if X is 10, this is, remember, this is our parent, right? So this is not the one we're looking at. This is the, this is the parent over here. Right, so this this doesn't doesn't count towards this one, right? If x is ten, which would make this whole thing one, one times three is three, plus one is four, right? So there's a point over at ten four, so that's why we're shooting across over here, and then it's going to cross up here over it over at uh, four at 10, four, so there's a point over there at 10, four that it's gonna cross at. And so we get enough to kind of get an idea of what's going on. So it shifts up by one. So instead of crossing right here, it we this kind of cross point is shifted up by one. So it's gone up to there. And then we, and that, <coughs> excuse me, can have another point over here. When, when this is 10, then it's going to equal this whole, this logarithm is going to equal one. And that's so that we can get that. What about if it was a negative, not a negative 10, but a one tenth, right? So if it is a one tenth, what does that equal? So if it's a tenth, so little bitty, so if it's it's way over here, then it would then y would be or that not y, but this part would be negative one, right? Negative one times three is negative three plus one is negative two. So at a tenth, we're down to negative two. So right here, this point right here would be. Let me get a color that's easier to see on this white thing. This point right here would be one-tenth negative two. One-tenth negative two, right? And again, for what we need right now, we're kind of just getting a basic idea of what's happened. This whole thing is shifted up by one, and then it's got stretched by stretched up by three. And that's, that's really 
all we really need to know for these graphs. We're not getting super detailed and all of those things. Let's do one last example and then we will be through. Okay, so this last example here, we've got this guy. So what all has happened, right? And that's kind of what we need to need to know, you know. And and if you're if you're getting struck stuck on some of this, it may be a good idea. Probably, almost certainly, will be a good idea to <coughs> talk about what's going on or what uh, you expect and what changes you're doing. So what parent function are we going with? Well, it's the one that starts up here, starts goes from positive infinity, crosses down through the thing and goes like that. So that's the parent function that we're looking at, which normally crosses the, the axis right there at, this point is normally at one zero, right? So this is the pink parent, right? And then when we translate this one, what all has changed? Well, it is compressed. It is compressed by a half, right? It also is shifted to the left. Nope, that's wrong. To the right, because inside is opposite, right? The right three units. Right. So normally it goes through here and which instead this time it's going to go through at one, two, three. So our new one is go our new one that we're going to graph is going to go through three shifted over. So it's going to be over here at. So the intercept, the X intercept in this case is going to be at four zero instead. Right. So we put up our graph. We're going to see that to be true. Right. So if we look here. It goes through at, oops, let me put this in the right place. It goes through at four zero instead of at one zero, right? And it's looking like that. If we want to kind of think through what is going to be true when, now this is a little bit more complicated. We could get a few more points kind of do, trying to think through the same idea. We're not, we're not super, super stressed. We know it's going to be a pretty flat bottom, so you could kind of YOLO and give it a good shot. But if we want to get an idea, if we, we could try to figure out when this whole thing turns into one fourth so when because it's when it's one one when it's when the inside here is one fourth then this whole thing is one right and one times a half so when would this be one fourth so x minus three equals one fourth so when when is that true if we add that there be three and a fourth so when x is three and a fourth three and one fourth then y would equal one half because one half times one is that. So if we're kind of building a bit of a, a little bit of a T chart, then that would be a point that we could pull off, right? So at X three and one fourth, Y would be one half, right? That could be a point. So if we look here, we've got one, two, three and a fourth. Y is at a half, so about right there, right? That's easy peasy. And then, <coughs> excuse me. And then, and we know, so the other thing, the other thing that we can know on the previous ones, if we pull up the previous one here, on this last one, the asymptote didn't change, right? Because on this last one, the there was no horizontal shift. So it still has an asymptote, at, at x equals zero, this one, on the other hand, there's a new asymptote, right? The, there's a new asymptote at positive, not at positive, not three, but, well, yeah, no, it would be positive three because it's normally at zero. Zero plus three is three. So there's a new asymptote at three. So we could, we could dot in that asymptote, right? So there's a new asymptote right there. Right. So instead of being at this point, so we could know. So if we had this point plotted and then we had this point plotted, we could kind of sketch in this and get close to what we were supposed to be doing. Now, the other point, whenever this whenever this one is maybe a negative one, we could turn this if we turn this into four. Right. 
four would be e this flipped over. So if we kind of want this inside to be four, so x minus three equals four. So when does it equal four? Well, it equals four. If we add three to both sides at x equals seven, <coughs> right? So when x is seven, this would be a negative one. So this would be negative one half. So at five, six, seven, we've got negative one half. And then you could connect kind of those three dots and get us a close approximation of what this graph looks like. And that is it for this lesson. It's, it's not too, too bad. We'll see you in the next one. And we'll learn more properties and more how to solve logarithmic equations, which might be a little bit less brain bendy and a little bit more just do this thing than graphing. But you got this. It's going to be fine. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.